Welcome back everyone. Today I have a fun tutorial for you. I'm going to be taking you through the step-by-step -step process on making women's overall shorts. Like always, the link for the pattern is in the description. It comes in multiple sizes. So download the pattern and let's get started. Getting started with supplies, you're going to want to grab yourself a nice fabric. For this particular pattern, I recommend using a canvas, a denim, corduroy, or twill. These are heavier weight, durable fabrics that are easy to work with lightweight interfacing and we're using the ES114. This particular one is fusible. You can choose to go with a fusible interfacing or a non-fusible. 12 jean buttons. These come in a variety of different styles and colors. Choose the ones that best suit your fabric. Two overall buckles and we're going to be showing you a few different styles later in the video. And lastly your pattern. This pattern is a printable pattern. You can find it at properfitclothing.com. It comes in multiple sizes and the link will be in the description. And the easiest way to put this pattern together is to cut off the top and the side and then lay them out alphanumerically. And by cutting off the top and the side, it allows the paper to overlap and the pattern to line up correctly. And once everything is lined up, tape it down and you're ready to choose the size and cut the pattern out. After cutting out your pattern, you should end up with two under panels out of your main fabric and two strips that are half the size as the under panel. This is also indicated on the pattern. Three waistband back panels, one out of your interfacing and two out of your main fabric and make sure to cut these on the fold. And do the same with the waistband front panel, one out of your interfacing and two out of your main fabric. Four front interfacing panels, two out of your main fabric and two out of your interfacing. Four strap panels out of your main fabric. Two pocket panels out of your main fabric. Two pocket yoke panels out of your main fabric two front pant panels out of your main fabric, and be sure to chalk in the guides on both sides by cutting out the top portion of your pattern. Two back pant panels, and don't forget to mark the dart and the pocket guides on both sides. One front chest panel cut on the fold. One interfacing strip cut to the size as indicated on the pattern. Two back chest panels, and cut the interfacing the same as the front. One chest pocket panel out of your main fabric and two back pocket panels also out of your main fabric. Moving on to construction, grab your pocket and front pant panels, line up the pocket curve and the front pant curve, place the right sides together, and sew along that edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. And repeat this process for the other two panels. Grab the pocket panel, flip it around towards the back so the wrong sides are touching, and press that seam so it's nice and flat. Add a top stitch along the edge to both of the panels, and you can choose how close you want to stitch to the edge. And to get a nice straight top stitch, I like to use a presser foot that helps guide the needle along the edge. This particular presser foot can be adjusted, and it's really helpful for getting those nice straight stitches. I personally love using them to get consistent stitches throughout my project. Grab the pocket yoke panels, Using the guides, line them up with the pocket panel with the right sides together. After lining it up, we're going to sew along the inside curved edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. Repeat the process for the other side. Using the guides again, line up the top and the side with those chalk marks and we're going to add a stitch as close as we can to the outside edge to secure those edges down. And this is mainly to keep that pocket in place so it's not moving around. Take the complete front pant panels, place the right sides together, and sew down the side just to the curve at a quarter inch seam allowance. And I like to sew through the corners and start a new stitch and go back around to the curve. Open the pants up with the right side facing you, and we're going to start working on the fly. And when you open it, it already kind of folds over, so take that fold and line it up with your chalk marks. Once it's lined up, pin it down, and we're going to add a top stitch along the curved guideline. When you reach the end, do a few back and forth stitches to really secure that flap down. Add another stitch as close as you can to that edge, and meet up with the stitch at the bottom. This will also secure it on the fold on the inside. Grab your back pocket panels, and we're going to hem the top edge by folding it over twice, pressing it down and sewing directly in the middle of the folded hem and be sure to match the hem with the other pocket panel with the wrong side facing up fold in the bottom edges once press them down and do the same for both of the side edges the bigger the fold the smaller the pocket will be so keep that in mind take the press pocket and line it up with the guides on the back pants panel pin it into position and sew along the outside edge leaving the top open this is another step where the presser foot guide is really helpful 
At the beginning and the end of the stitch, do a bunch of tack stitches to really secure that pocket down because that point is gonna take the most stress. And like always, repeat the process for the other pocket. Moving on to the dart, what we're gonna do is pinch that fabric so that way the chalk guidelines are touching and the axis fabric on the inside will point towards the inside seam. Add a stitch to the end of the point towards the inside of the pocket. Grab both your back pant panels, place the right sides together, and we're going to stitch the inside seam at a quarter inch seam allowance. And remember to just sew the curve. Open up the panels with the right sides facing up, and we're going to add a top stitch to that inside seam. The stitch can be on either side of the seam. Roll your seam allowance to the left or the right and add a top stitch all the way along that curve. And using the presser guide, it helps kind of dig into that seam and guide me along through that curve with the perfect straight stitch. The top stitch is not completely necessary. If you want to skip, you can, but it will add extra strength to that seam. Moving on to the waistband back panel, grab one of your waistband back panels and your interfacing panel. Place the interfacing on the wrong side, iron it on. We're going to be adding both of the waistband panels to the back pant panel. Make sure the curve is pointing up and place the right sides together. And for the back, do the same thing, but right side to wrong side. And what we're doing is sandwiching the pant panel in between both of the waistband panels. And it's best to pin this so that way it's not moving around as you're sewing it. And once you have it pinned, go ahead and sew at a quarter inch seam allowance. And as you're sewing, it's always good to double check to make sure you're sewing all the layers. Flip both of the waistband panels up so that way the seam is lined up and we're going to add a top stitch all the way along that edge. If everything is lined up correctly, it should add a top stitch on that top seam and also on the bottom. Pressing this edge before you stitch is also a good idea so that way everything is nice and flat before you start stitching. Grab your waistband front panels and we're going to do the same exact thing. Add the interfacing, sandwich it in between the panel and sew it on. You should end up with the same exact thing, but for the front pant panel. Next, grab your chest pocket panel, and we're going to be doing the same thing as the back pocket panels. Rolling the top over twice, hiding that raw edge, pressing it, and sewing directly on that fold. Fold the bottom edge over once, press it, and then both of the side edges. And again, the more you fold it over, the smaller the pocket will get. Using the same technique as the back panel, we're going to line it up on the front chest panel in the guidelines and so around the edges leaving the top open. And if you are looking for a bigger pocket, no worries, all you have to do is cut a bigger rectangle out and follow the same steps. And you could also add more pockets on too if you want, you could add them below or above. It's totally up to you and you do it at this step. Flip the front chest panel over, add on your interfacing. It's going to go flush right up to the top edge and then roll the curved edges over twice as small as you can. We're trying to eliminate that raw edge without taking up too much fabric. And once you do that, press it and sew along that edge. And keep in mind you want to sew directly on that folded area so it doesn't flip back open. From there, we're going to hem the top. We're going to roll it over twice. Make sure you stay on the interfacing area, press it down, and stitch along that edge. And it's best to sew in the middle of that fold so you lock down all the layers. Grab your back chest panel and place the right sides together. And we're going to sew along the straight inside edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. Add a top stitch by rolling the seam allowance to the left or right and stitching on top of that seam allowance. Place your interfacing strip on the top edge, press it down, and we're going to do the same thing like we did for the front chest panel. Roll the curved edges over twice as tight as you can to that edge, press it down, and stitch directly on top of that fold. Roll the top edge over twice, staying within that interfacing, press it down, and stitch along that edge. Next, we're going to assemble the back of the overalls. So grab your back pant and chest panel, and we're going to place the right sides together, lining up the center. We're going to be sewing the back chest panel to the waistband panel, and it's only going to be to the outside waistband panel. So pin that on and sew at a quarter inch seam allowance, leaving the inside waistband panel open. And since you're sewing multiple layers, just take your time and make sure all the layers are getting sewn together and that the center mark is staying centered as you sew. And after sewing, just double check to make sure the waistband is even all the way across and that the back waistband didn't get sewn in. 
From here, we're gonna roll the edge of the inside waistband, lining it up with the outside waistband. And it's best to roll it, press it, and pin it, so that way everything is lined up, and then you can go ahead and take it to the sewing machine and stitch a top stitch all the way across. And this is why it's crucial to have both sides line up, so that way when you're stitching on top, it's mirroring the other side. And we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing for the front panels. Grab your front pant panel and chest panel and repeat all the steps exactly in the previous process, giving you a full front panel. Next, grab your front interfacing panels, place the interfacing on the wrong side, press it on, and we're gonna roll over the top curve edge once and place it on our front panel. Line it up with the top curve and sew at a quarter inch seam allowance all the way down towards the pocket. Be sure to keep the curved edge folded as you sew over it. Take the front interfacing flaps and fold them around to the back. Press the edges, line up the top curve, and we're gonna sew from the top curve down all the way to the pocket. And you wanna make sure that edge is pressed nice and flat so that way it's not too bulky as you're sewing it. Run the stitch right up to the bottom of the pocket. Grab your under panels and interfacing, and remember this interfacing is half the size. Place it on half of the under panel, Press it on and what we're going to do is fold it in half with the right sides touching and we're going to stitch just along the top at a quarter inch seam allowance. Snip the inside fold corner and we're going to flip the right sides out. Snipping in the corner is going to reduce some of that bulk so it's more square after you flip the right side out. And before we sew it on I recommend pressing it to really flatten it out. And once it's pressed we're going to lay it on the back panel with the right sides touching right up flush with that curved edge. When you have it flush stitch out a quarter inch seam allowance. Just like the front chest panel we're going to flip it around to the back press it down and stitch along that edge. And when going over the waistband it can get a little bit bulky so just go slow. Next we're going to cut little paper strips that match the size of your button. This is going to help us determine the placement of the button so lay them out on your front panel and make sure they're evenly spaced with each other and across from each other. And doing the buttonholes we're going to use a buttonhole presser foot. Presser foot can easily be adjusted to fit any size button. All you have to do is place your button in the top little opening and then close it shut. When it's tight that's the size of your button hole so you can take your button out and adjust your sewing machine. Depending on your sewing machine it may look different but all you have to do is adjust it to your buttonhole setting and the width you prefer for the buttonhole. Attach the presser foot and slide down the buttonhole bar. It will line up in the gap on the left hand side and that's going to be the size of your buttonhole. Before you do them on your garment it's best to test them out on a scrap piece of fabric. This will allow you to correct any errors with the machine and test out the size of the buttonhole to make sure it actually fits your button. Cut a slit on the inside of the hole and then go ahead and test your button slide it through if it's nice and tight going through and actually goes through you're good to go and then go ahead and do them on your garment and as you can see I like to let the machine pass through a couple times allowing for a nice thick stitch buttonhole grab both of your front and back panels place the right sides together and we're only stitching from the bottom of the pocket to the leg opening and stitch at a quarter inch seam allowance and repeat the stitch for the other side flip the right sides out and we're going to add a top stitch directly up to that pocket for extra strength do a nice tack stitch at the bottom of the pocket, really securing that seam down. And repeat that top stitch for the other side. The wrong side out and take both of the inside edges, place the right side together, pin and stitch at a quarter inch seam allowance. Flip the right side out, make sure everything's lined up correctly and we're gonna add a top stitch to that inside seam. At this point you'll have two separate leg openings and we're going to hem the bottom leg openings. So roll the edge over twice, press it, pin it, and stitch all the way around that outside edge. I recommend going slow and in control so you get a nice even stitch. And it can be more tricky without a guide but the goal is to go all the way around and meet perfectly back up with the start stitch. And when completed with one leg opening, go ahead and do the same thing for the other leg opening. Moving on to the strap panels, grab two and place the right sides together. We're gonna stitch all the way around the outside edge at a quarter inch seam allowance, leaving the bottom open. And I like to sew through the corners and start a new stitch. And when you're done stitching, we're gonna snip both of the corners Flip the right side out, and it can be tricky to poke out the top corner, so just use a long dowel, and after poking them out, go ahead and press it. Once you have the corners poked out and nice and pressed, we're gonna roll the inside opening edges onto each other, so the right side of the edges are touching each other. 
pin the opening closed and we're gonna sew all the way around the outside edge sealing off that opening. And I think it's best to seal off the bottom first and then continue all the way around the outside edge. In these corners I do not sew through because it's top stitching and it's gonna be seen from the outside so it's best just to turn around the edge. Repeat this process for the other strap. And next we're gonna add the buckles to the strap. You have a few different options with adjusters attached to the buckle or the buckle and adjusters separate. I like to use the ones that are separate. It's a little bit easier to use and looks a little nicer. So go ahead and grab your strap adjuster, feed it through from bottom to top and back through the opposite opening. Pull the strap adjuster down the strap just a little ways and add the separate buckle. Make sure the top of the strap is pointing to the clip in the buckle. Once it's through, we're gonna wrap it around back, so feed some more slack into the buckle adjuster. Loop the top of the strap through the back opening and then back around through the front opening. And the more slack you pull through that buckle adjuster, the easier it is to pull the top of the strap through. And don't worry, it can be a little bit tricky with thicker fabrics, but just keep on pulling it, it will eventually go through. And once you have it through, you can see that it won't stay through unless you stitch it down. So what you're going to do is feed some more slack back out, but leave the end in there and we're going to stitch it back onto itself. And the key is to sew the strap as close as you can to the opening that it was first fed through. And once you find enough room to sew, do a nice tack stitch. And this step can be a little bit tricky, but it's well worth it in the long run. Having the separate buckle and strap adjuster makes it a lot easier to adjust the strap to the perfect length. Take both of your complete straps and the curve will face towards the outside of the garment and we're placing them on the inside of the back panel. Line them up flush to the outside edge and right up against that hem. And when they're lined up, we're going to stitch from the back along the top edge. These will take a lot of wear and tear, so if you want to add another stitch, that's totally cool. And the main thing to keep in mind is to keep those edges flush with the outside edge so that way it lays evenly on your body. And pretty much all we have left to do is add the buttons. So what we're gonna do is line that strap up flush with the outside edge, mark with chalk, make sure they're even with each other, grab the back part of your button, and it's best to cut little slits before you push the back of the button through. Once the back of the button is through, push on the top of the button and you can either hammer on, or depending on your button, it may be a screw on. Either way, secure it down and you're all set with the top buttons. And we're gonna do the same exact thing for the bottom buttons. So lay out the side and line up the buttonholes with the back under panel. Mark through the buttonholes with chalk and that's gonna be your placement for the buttons. And then go ahead and install the buttons the same way. Repeat this process for both sides and you're all done. And like always, thank you so much for watching. I hope this video helped you out. Stay tuned because I'm gonna be doing a few different variations of these, a long pants version, a male version, and a few different styles. So stay safe and I'll see you next time.